a sustainable policy that enhances American energy security, enhances American, American energy independence. And that's the approach the President's taken. Mara. What he's going to say and why he's chosen New Hampshire? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't have any uh, readout to give to you. I think um, uh, any any preview to give to you, rather, of the of the speech yet. Uh, we might have uh, more for you on that. I think uh, the, the yeah. No, 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 but it's um, uh, I mean there is a you know we're going to New York. I think we're going to New York afterwards, but. Um, you know, I, I'm sure we'll have more to say about that later in the day. I don't want to steal the president's thunder, but you can expect that he'll he'll uh, be focused on uh, matters of uh, uh, domestic policy that are of concern to the American people, um, and we'll well, uh, well, I'm sure we'll have more details for you, Kristen. Thanks, Following up on North Korea quickly, um, you talked about the fact that this is an important first step and that you want to see it followed up with concrete action. Mm -hmm. Can you speak specifically about what some of the benchmarks are that you'll be watching for in the coming months? Uh, well, look, the, the, the DPRK has agreed uh, to implement a moratorium on long-range missile launches, nuclear tests, and nuclear activities at Yangbyon, including uranium enrichment activities. Uh, it has agreed to do that. What we will be looking for is um, for them to uh, honor that agreement uh, by uh, implementing a moratorium on long-range missile launches, nuclear tests, uh, and nuclear activities at Yangbyon, at Yangbyon including uranium enrichment activities. Uh, the, uh, as part of that, as part of our ability to verify the implementation of the agreements that they've made, uh, the DPRK has also agreed to the return of IAEA inspectors to verify and monitor the moratorium on uh, uranium enrichment activities and to confirm the disablement of the 5MW reactor and associated facilities, part of the agreement that was made. Uh, so uh, those are the actions uh, that follow on the commitments that were made and that's what we'll be monitoring and, and, and clearly uh, uh, living up to the agreements and implementing the agreements uh, will be, uh, if that happens, will be considered another positive step. Uh, so that's what we'll be uh, monitoring and watching. And also, Reverend Franklin Graham made headlines earlier this month when he questioned <coughs> the president's religion on MSNBC. He's just released uh, an apology saying the president has said he is a Christian and I accept that. Is that apology good enough? Well, I, I don't know uh, that uh, we didn't seek an apology. Uh, we certainly appreciate uh, the sentiment expressed and uh, we'll leave it at that. Dan. Thank you. Um, just on North Korea, continuing what you were just talking about, um, beyond what North Korea, this agreement uh, on its nuclear program, is, is there the hope that uh, this will help to lift the veil on their intentions, uh, deli deliberate, deliberations rather internally in that country? Well, I, I, I think I'm not um, breaking any, any news when I say that it's, a, it's an opaque society and an opaque uh, uh, government. I think everything remains to be seen here. Again, we uh, have uh, no uh, uh, you know, sort of pre-cooked ideas or, or, uh, or sentiments about what the change in leadership will mean. Uh, we approach it with the expectation of continuity in behavior, but we certainly uh, welcome positive steps, and that is uh, what we're doing today, is welcoming a positive step that it, uh, is the result of the discussions in Beijing. We will then, you know, we will continue to uh, pursue our core objective here, which is the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, uh, and we will monitor uh, the uh, North Koreans' behavior and how they uh, live up to the uh, agreements that they've made in Beijing. And another question on Olympia Snow, Senator Snow, uh, yesterday talked about how um, the atmosphere is uh, <coughs> polarizing in Washington and it's my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. um, the President talked a lot over the last few years about changing the way that Washington works. Who's to blame for this? Well, uh, I think the President has noted on many occasions the regrettable fact that partisanship uh, continues to um, all too frequently dominate uh, the approach to uh, trying to find solutions uh, to the challenges that we face in this country. 
uh, and uh, you know he is he has worked very hard to try to find common ground with uh, members of the other party in Congress, uh, and that began with reaching out on the Recovery Act and on health care reform and on uh, issue after issue, and, and continued through uh, his uh, uh, efforts in negotiations with the Speaker of the House to try to find a a balanced, uh, sweeping, grand bargain approach to dealing with our deficit and debt uh, issues. Uh, it's uh, evident in uh, the elements of the American Jobs Act, which many of which were uh, had their uh, origination uh, with Republicans and uh, with bipartisan ideas, the kinds of ideas that had traditionally gained uh, bipartisan support. And with uh, the action that Congress has taken on some elements of the American Jobs Act, I think it's demonstrated that those uh, uh, that there is uh, an attempt by the President when he puts forward these uh, legislative proposals that they are designed in a way uh, not to uh, simply uh, satisfy uh, one party or the other, but to, to get things done that are achievable in a bipartisan context. And that's the approach he'll continue to take. But there is no doubt, as Senator Snow uh, said yesterday, that uh, the, the level of, you know, sort of Pi uh, partisan polarization uh, con continues to be regrettably high, and that's certainly uh, the view the President takes. Chris. Jay, I want to follow up with you on this idea of President Obama <laughs> issuing an executive order requiring federal contracts to have LGBT inclusive non discrimination policies. Will the administration issue this order before the end of uh, President Obama's first term? Um, Chris, I unfortunately uh, will give you the unsatisfying answer that, that I don't have any. Uh, information for you on uh, any executive order that the President may or may not uh, intend to issue in the, in the coming months. Multiple sources have told me that this uh, measure has been cleared by both the Labor and Justice Departments, and that's awaiting final action at the White House. Can, mm -hmm. can you tell me at least that that measure is at that, is at that Again, point? I just don't have any comment on uh, <coughs> executive orders that we may or may not be considering uh, or uh, executive uh, or actions that may or may not have been taken at lower levels within the administration. Uh, from the podium, like what is the level of discussion of the executive order? Is it being discussed among officials at this time? Again, I just don't have, I'm sorry, I just don't have any information for you on that, but I appreciate the question. Gary? Thank you. Um, did, does the White House view with the, in terms of relations with the House GOP, you have the um, Stop Act, the payroll tax cut, and now Cantor proposing this Jobs Act? Is this, um, is, does the White House see this as a sh as a positive shift in maybe the relationship that had been very adversarial, I know for months, or for at least recent months, senior administration officials have been telling reporters that there was some hope that there would be a more cooperative cooperative turn, sort of as the election grows near, um, just based on some considerations by the House GOP. Is this what you've been predicting? Well, I would say that we, um, <clears throat> Our approach to this is to expect continuity of behavior, but we certainly <laughs> consider this. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a dis different issue. The, um, no, I, well, look, I've been saying all along, and I think obviously reflecting what the President believes, that uh, we do not buy the conventional wisdom that suggests that nothing can be done in an election year uh, between a President of one party and a Congress controlled largely by the other. We've never accepted that. There are a variety of reasons why we don't think that has to be true. One of them is the fact that the President is putting forward and pursuing proposals that he certainly believes and we believe uh, could and should earn bipartisan support, uh, but also because we think, uh, not because uh, we hope it to be so, but because we think that members of Congress, Republicans included, uh, or Republicans especially, uh, may have uh, some uh, uh, compelling reason to uh, try to get some things done before uh, the election this year. I think that it's uh, a function of uh, 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 of the fact that House members have to face re-election every two years, that, that every member of the House of Representatives who's running for re-election will have to justify to his or her constituents their actions during this Congress. And if they're, if they're if the only thing they have to offer is that I blocked everything I could that President Obama proposed, maybe that will work in some districts, but I think in some it, it, it won't be a particularly uh, compelling reason uh, to send that member back to Washington. So perhaps uh, that is why there is hope that actions can be taken. Now, uh, you know, we, we, we take things day by day here. The fact is we saw uh, 
relative to what we've experienced, <coughs> fairly swift action to extend the payroll tax cut uh, and uh, unemployment insurance. Uh, that was a good sign, and, and, and we certainly, the, some of the items that you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, raise the hope of further bipartisan cooperation, and, and this President would certainly welcome that. Uh, because as, as, as he's made clear, there's a lot of time between now and November. There's even a lot of time between now and when the general election campaign will really uh, require uh, his engagement at a, at a, at a higher level. Uh, and, and between now and then, there's an opportunity and, and really uh, a requirement that he do, do everything that he can uh, to try to move the ball down the field uh, in terms of the American economy and, 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 and uh, employment in this country. So he's going to take advantage of that to the extent that uh, members of the other party in Congress uh, see that as uh, a positive uh, opportunity for them. He will welcome it. Carol. Did the leader set enough time for another meeting in the future? Uh, I don't have a, a, a meeting, uh, a future meeting uh, to announce for you. I, you know, it's. Certainly, the President looks forward to continuing the conversation uh, that uh, he and the four leaders uh, and the Vice President had over lunch today. I mean, I would note that, and I, maybe I did already in answer to the question about the last time they physically met in this kind of grouping, uh, while it, that has been a while that they've had this kind of meeting here in the White House, the President has obviously had numerous discussions with the Speaker of the House since then over the phone uh, at various times over the past uh, several months. and. Uh, the communication will continue, uh, it, whether it's at lunch or in physical meetings or on the phone, uh, is yet to be determined. They won't just be figure out day what's day. next. I mean, had they agreed to <laughs> move for a task White House aides were talking to their congressional counterparts on something specific? You've talked about the small business legislation. Is there, do they at least agree that they would move the ball forward on that? Well, we've been very explicit, I think, about the opportunity to move forward on, on some elements of uh, of. Uh, the proposals that uh, the majority leader put forward, and, and, and we will certainly pursue that, working with members of both parties in Congress. There is an opportunity to get that done, and, uh, and hopefully Congress will, uh, will act on it. Um, it requires, you know, having the accomplishment as the goal here as opposed to, you know, some sort of partisan goal, which, again, I think there is an indication here that we can get some things done, and we look forward to doing that. I don't have a specific readout about who uh, you know, Rob Neighbors is obviously our, our uh, top legislative affairs uh, official here at the White House, and he's engaging with um, leadership offices all the time, and will continue to do so, and others will as well. On, on North Korea, um, with this particular development, is there White House concerned at all that these steps could be seen as or end up propping up a dynasty that's basically been 